Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your least favorite YouTuber here, back at it again to drop, um, uh, what if Deku had a copy quirk? Now, 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 before I start hearing that one guy in the back go, but you're not original, everybody else has done what if Deku had a copy quirk before. Well, before you say anything, this is going to be the same exact thing, copied and pasted, and you're still gonna watch it. And now that you're thinking to yourself, he has a point? Then now that you figure that out, let's get started. Now guys, I'm trolling. Obviously it's not gonna be the same exact thing that you've already seen before. It's gonna be my original take on it. I was quite literally sitting on my bed like five minutes ago when an idea hit me and I was just like, you know what? I might as well get up. I haven't uploaded a video in two days because I've been doing prep for Thanksgiving. I've been going out with friends and I've been living my best life. You know what I mean? I've been having a pretty cool time, but now Thanksgiving break is here and I'm finally going to be taking some time out of my day to basically start bringing you guys some of the best content. I'm going to be dropping, I think, four What If Movies during this time, with this one being one of them. Now, this video also is going to be a sponsored one, however, those details will be midway through the video. That being said, though, let's get right into the intro. Hit it! Hey, Ross, sauce it up! Okay, so to start off the what if, obviously we need to cover the origin of Izuku Midoriya, or, well, in this case, his birth. The only real change to the story is basically going to be his parents. Because when it comes down to Deku's appearance, he's basically just going to be looking a little better than what he does like in canon. Going to be having a little bit better in terms of genes. Now that is going to be because he is going to be the son of Inko, a retired model, meaning Inko is going to be looking even better than she does in canon. Um... And Hisashi is basically going to be a retired pro hero, meaning that that man, he's pretty built. You know what I'm saying? He, he was a like a, let's say like a 100 ranking hero with a fire quirk. And he's still going to be having that same baseline quirk that he had in the original. Now, with that being said, like I said, nothing really drastic is going to be changing in terms of Deku's appearance. Deku is going to be a lot more, you know, like, he's going to look a lot better, but like, our man Deku, he's already a good looking guy, you know what I mean? It's just a little rough around the edges, but you know, we can get him there. And so, you know, Deku's just going to be having a couple of traits that are going to be more shown. He's going to have a nicer jawline. He's going to have nicer hair. It's not going to be as like, uh, as like flumsy or like all over the place. You know what I mean? It's not going to be as nappy as his normal hair. And we're basically just going to have it so that Deku is, um, excuse me for what I'm about to say, guys. I know I'm about to sound so sus, but the man's going to be cute. All right. So with that being said, Deku is definitely going to be having the looks. Now, when it comes to his father and his fire quirk, he's definitely going to be a prominent role in terms of Deku's life because of the fact that while well, she was a retired model and Hisashi is essentially an old pro hero, they have a lot of money. Meaning that when Deku is growing up, he's not exactly going to be hanging out around the same crowd as Bakugo and those other kids because he's going to be going to a whole different school entirely. Not to say that he doesn't live near that same area because he does. He lives about like like 10 blocks away, like 5 miles away from Bakugo, but that is a pretty decent distance. And so Deku and Bakugo are never really going to be hanging out with each other because uh, Inko and Mitsuki, I believe that's her name, yeah Mitsuki, Bakugo's mom, are not exactly going to be friends. That being said, uh, Hisashi is going to be there to essentially teach Deku things and he's going to have a very prominent role in Deku's life, being a very great father figure to Deku. That being said, Deku would grow up, you know, hanging around his father and mother and he's actually going to be having an incredible childhood, actually being very popular. Being the son of a pro hero definitely comes with his perks. And when Deku turns about 4 years old and finally ends up unlocking his very own quirk, when he does this, it is essentially... Uh, the ability to copy quirks. Now, it's not going to be the most broken thing in the universe is quirk, and it's mostly going to be based off his ability to use it. In case any of you guys have ever read the story of an ordinary, a webtoon, it's kind of going to be like that with a couple of added benefits and with a couple of drawbacks added to the quirk. 
And so we're going to need to copy that. And how exactly was the Deku unlocked it? Now, one day when Deku was basically out with his father, he would essentially be like, let's say at a mall, all right? They were basically at a mall and this guy basically ended up using his quirk to rob the register because he didn't have enough money to pay for everything. And he basically ended up blowing up the front door window as some security guards ran over there using their quirk to try to stop him, but they weren't able to as the man just ran in through the mall and everybody was just standing by. Now, Hasashi being who he is, a retired pro hero basically told Deku to stay there as he basically used his fire quirk to shoot a gigantic like a beam of fire straight from his mouth which basically caused the villain to get knocked into the wall and fall out unconscious as Hisashi would basically dust himself off and be like I still got it as he would go over to Deku and be like you see that Deku someday you're gonna be a pro hero just like your old man and you're gonna be stopping villains just like that as Deku would say I wish I had a quirk like yours being able to do that with like you was so awesome i was like out of nowhere hisashi would notice that deku's hair it's kind of having like a sort of like reddish tint to it as deku looks at his father and he's like what do you mean but then deku realizes it he's like is this my quirk and Asashi immediately grabs Deku as he doesn't even acknowledge what he just did. He's so excited. He ends up telling, taking Izuku immediately to the Quirk Doctor, a different one than Ujiko, and he would basically end up getting his Quirk examined. They would end up telling him that what it looks like is that Deku seems to have a Fire Quirk. However, uh, or no, not a Fire Quirk, but it seems to be that Deku has a Copy Quirk, and it's on, honestly way different than any Copy Quirks that they've ever seen around, ever. As a lot of people basically end up seeing that this should technically allow him to copy one quirk at a time. And maybe through training he can maybe unlock and like end up copying more and more quirks as things go. And so after Deku hears this, he's just happy. Like the man is ecstatic at the fact that he has a quirk you know what i mean like the man is like very 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 happy you know what i mean and so they end up basically going home where hisashi ends up from this point forward starting to try to train deku and how to use that copy quirk and showing him how to use his fire quirk because of the fact that deku has a copy quirk he can of course copy his father's quirk and after about two weeks of trying he's finally able to copy the flames now they're actually going to be very weak at first because deku doesn't know exactly how, how quirks work or the anatomy of any of that stuff but through like basically a little bit of studying and after let's say about one year of training with like learning how the quirks how these quirks work and his father trying to teach and stuff slowly Deku ends up understanding how taking quirks and copying them end, ends up working and so Deku will now be about five years old and so Deku would continue training with his father with his fire quirk which is the quirk that Deku is able to steal very very easily he would also steal his mother's quirk, which is still going to be that like telekinesis quirk that allows him to move very, very small objects. However, once Deku finally understood how to use the fire quirk, it seemed as if his quirk actually had the innate ability to increase the power of the powers that he himself takes. And so when he realizes this, he's like, yo, that's kind of cracked, you know what I mean? And so people at his school before he was popular, you know what I mean? He was the son of the pro hero, but now he has a copy quirk that is so cool. Deku not only is limited to having one power, Hour, he can have any of them so everybody immediately starts hopping on this man's rod you know what i mean and deku just becomes popular like even more overnight this is when deku would you know continue training continue learning how to control the quirks and years would pass as deku would often store quirks finding out that he's able to actually hold up to four quirks at a time where he would have realized that when he copies a quirk, his prediction was right. It becomes way more powerful through understanding of a quirk. So if you guys have seen An Ordinary and you guys have read it, the webtoon, there's basically an arc where he basically goes around stealing people's abilities. And when he does that, he pretty much is able to make them more powerful and use them even better than the than the user themselves. So Deku definitely going to have a very good control over the quirks that he does end up copying. And so he doesn't end up obviously, you know, going to going to, you know, the same school as Bakugo. So when Deku's growing up, he's not going to sit there and be like some tyrant type figure, but no, he's kind of just going to be a really cool guy who people go up to and people are really, really going to like Deku. That being said, growing up, Deku actually ends up taking a liking towards basketball. Now, the reason that I'm referring to basketball is because in case any of you guys have ever seen Kuroko no Basket, then you guys know that some of the popular parts of Deku are kind of inspired from a, a, from a character by the name of Kisei. He 
basically has the ability to copy any basketball styles, and that is where Deku's ability to copy stuff comes into play. Deku's ability to copy stuff doesn't just come in the form of learning how to take quirks, it also comes in the form of learning things very easily. He can copy subtle movements, meaning that he joins the basketball team and he is very, very good at it. And through the years, Deku would get stronger and stronger, eventually basically creating his own Instagram by the time that he's 13 years old, instantly blowing up overnight, becoming a sort of celebrity figure for young audiences because Deku is a very good looking person. And so a bunch of girls start immediately following Deku, giving this man a sort of celebrity status at his school, improving his popularity even more because the man is too sexy. No homo, of course. But with that being said, if I have to say what Deku looks like, he basically rocks a little F-boy cut and Mans is just in a league of his own, to say the least. That being said, he's still going to be growing up training with his father through the past couple of years and his father would teach him a couple of fighting styles and he would even learn a bit of modeling from his mom because of the fact that now he's famous he might as well do a couple of model deals and so you know he would rep some clothes from high up brands you know what i'm saying gucci stuff like that you know he's he has a pretty big following on insta and so he inherently ends up basically learning things very easily meaning he always stays at the top of his class and like i said it being kind of similar to kisei in the aspect of what his personality is like i just took the power aspect of copying stuff from an ordinary or john in case you guys have seen that series and the man is just obviously popping off he trains with his abilities and he just kind of continues being a great person up until we finally get to the point of the ua exams where by this point deku has already trained his quirk very very well trained his body very well meaning he knows a lot and i mean a lot of different fighting styles deku has studied quirks deku understands how they work Deku has definitely been able to steal random quirks and understand the function of them as well as how to improve them and all that crazy stuff. And Deku is just uh, absolute like broken of a person, you know what I mean? So we're kind of just going to be skipping over to the day where the UA entrance exam comes along because this is just his origin and I briefly you know kind of pass right through it because this doesn't really have anything to do really with the actual story and so we're kind of just going to be skipping over to the day where deku is essentially taking the ua entrance exam that being said when he arrives there he only needs to steal a couple of quirks in order for him to pass and the way that he does this is because deku essentially just needs to see them use the ability one time in order for him to steal it and so Deku is, you know, he's pretty good at that. So what he does is basically before his dad, you know, drops him off, he would basically just ask him to use his fire quirk as his father would do so. And Deku would add it to his arsenal, just waving his dad goodbye, saying that he's definitely going to make him proud as his father would say, oh, you definitely will. You've never disappointed me, Zuku. Go get him out there. Break a leg. You know what I mean? Deku would be like, ouch, as he walks in there and he's like, nah, I get it, dad. As, you know, Hisashi just laughs and Deku gets a good kick out of it as well. As, you know, he would begin to walk on in there. And before the UA entrance exam even starts, Deku ends up bumping into some girl with the name of Uraraka. Now, she ends up using a quirk on this boy by the name of Deku. And he basically ends up overhearing the fact that it's a gravity quirk. Deku instantly takes note of that and copies that quirk like immediately as he would just continue walking by and he sees another kid using some electricity quirk flaunting it around this being Kaminari as he ends up stealing that and while Deku's walking over there a bunch of girls immediately start to be like wait is that is that Izuku Midoriya as a bunch of them start whispering and they end up basically noticing that yeah that's him Nejire who's the third year who's actually at the school and is a pretty big fan of Izuku ends up flying over the crowd as Deku notices this and takes immediate note as he takes the quirk and just ends up basically giving a big bright smile as he just starts acknowledging all the fangirls you know what I mean he's having a pretty good time you know the man is straight vibing a bunch of people are like oh my god it's it's Deku and Deku just you know he's kind of smiling giving some waves here and there there, just telling everybody that you know he appreciates the fan love that being said you know Deku basically just ends up smiling as he goes inside and ends up taking the written portion now when it comes to whether he's gonna sit there and be like uh uh just start stuttering and muttering all over the place and Ida calls him out that does not end up happening however Ida does still end up calling him out because he basically says that Deku is causing a scene because a bunch of the girls are just whispering and muttering and he's basically saying how it's his fault for you know being a celebrity and coming on in here all nonchalant Deku just basically 
basically tells him that it's not his fault. And when Ida says something, he's like, hey, stop distracting. All the girls give him this death stare as they're like, you better not talk to him like that again. You know what I mean? And so on top of having a copy quirk, Deku has a female army by his side. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty funny, honestly. It's a pretty funny scene. That being said, he he also ends up saying something to present Mike, to which present Mike is just like, if you would have listened, you would have, you know, basically let me finish talking. And so, you know, he finally ends up covering what the zero pointers do, and Ida just sits back down as they end up in, in, actually going out to their, you know, their respective areas. As Deku is just, you know, he's out there, a bunch of girls are surrounding him. Deku's doing some stretches, they're watching him, they're asking if they can get his number. Deku just says, oh, he doesn't really go and give his number, and the girls are just like, yeah, we understand as Deku just basically tells them that you know he's gonna go over there as they all are just like uh okay as Deku just walks over to the front gate and he sees Uraraka there Uraraka's just like oh my god it's that kid as she just looks at him and she's about to say something but by that time, President Mike is like, what are you guys doing? There's no time like to wait. As Deku immediately smirks and uses Nezure's quirk to blast off into the air. As immediately, Deku would basically supercharge fire, electricity, and the beams that Nezure shoots out. As he would shoot it at a bunch of three-pointers, just eradicating them instantly. As he flies up on in there and just starts destroying robots left and right and left and right. Deku just starts destroying robots. Some people People are even recording and you know there's there's literally a chopper in the air recording Deku because this man is that famous and so you know we basically just have like a chopper pretty decent distance from UA recording what Deku is doing as they're just recording Deku destroying robots and so clips of Deku just obliterating so many robots just starts blowing up and by the time that Deku is done destroying robots he would have literally accumulated a grand total of 736 robot points and that's nothing because that's just the that's just the tip that's not even the tip of the iceberg you know what I mean that's just that's literally that's just the tip no way it is just the tip of the iceberg because the rest of it's underwater yeah I, I messed that expression up but yeah Deku basically is destroying a lot of robots and seeing this Nezu ends up using the zero pointer however when the zero pointer comes out Deku simply smiles and says it's about time that he gets to show off a little bit as Deku would fly into the air using the flame to propel himself and Nezure's little flying ability as Deku just basically ends up charging bolts of electricity in all 10 of his fingers as he shoots lightning straight at the zero pointer which causes the zero pointer to quite literally short circuit as it just stands there and Deku just smirks as he looks at the camera smiles and then turns back as he quite literally says fire roar literally melting off the head of the zero pointer just causing the entire head to explode causing a chain reaction and causing the zero pointer to just engulf in a gigantic explosion to which Deku flies a certain distance away and just sits there as he lands back on the ground with a smug expression on his face and he says I think that went well Deku would basically blow up overnight even bigger than he already was because you know Deku had like two million two million followers you know what I mean he was pretty well known around Japan but not around the world but now after people saw that video not just good looking but he's also now going to be the number one pro hero prospect for the next you know pro hero after all my and nezu seeing all of this stuff when deku finally gets his acceptance letter which is going to be in a couple of days but when he does he ends up getting a little bit of a a scholarship a full ride scholarship in there but you know that that's like in the future so we're not going to cover that and so, you know, Deku, you know, he basically just arrives home, tells his dad that he did well. As his dad, just like, I saw those clips. And Deku just lets out a giggle as he's like, let's go to the mall. I think you deserve a little bit of a shopping spree. And Deku is just like, I mean, why not? On you, as Asashi is like, yup, it's on me. And Inko just walks in the kitchen as she's like, so where are we going? As, you know, Asashi is just like, yeah, we're going to the mall. Me and, me and Izuku, we're going to go do some shopping. As she says, oh, fun, can I come? And Deku's like, it's a boy's thing's mom. As Inko is just like, bummer. As she just lays down and she puts on some anime and starts binging it. Actually, no, she goes on YouTube and goes on this guy's Zether channel. He's he's pretty cool. You know, she ends up subscribing, which is something that you guys should do, considering that over 50% of y'all ain't subscribed. But, 
No, that's not my place to tell you guys. Or is it? No, I'm totally kidding. But seriously, though, he and, uh, you know, Sashi would end up going to the mall where Hisashi basically uses his quirk to stop another robbery so many years later. Like, literally 10 years later, as after he's done stopping it, he literally turns towards Deku and says his quote as he says, I still got it. As Deku just face bombs and he's like, you know, Dad, I could have done that better than you. As Hisashi's just like, yeah, I know, but thank you for letting your old man get, it, get his own little moment of spot. His own spotlight. As he and Deku basically end up getting, you know, told by the security that he's not allowed to use his quirk. But Hisashi's like, nah, I'm a retired pro hero, man. Like, I have a license. And they're like, wait, you're, you know, they say Hisashi's pro hero name. And they're like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what? They start apologizing. They start telling him that he did such a great job. And that, you know, he was their favorite hero growing up and yada, yada, yada. That being said though, they basically end up going back home where Deku just ends up arriving with all these bags and he puts them away. A couple of days go by and Deku ends up getting his acceptance letter which basically contains everything that I already spoiled before. And so obviously Deku just basically ends up being like, all right. And he pretty much just ends up just accepting the fact that he got a scholarship. At this point, Inko and Asashi are just proud of Deku. And Deku just says that, you know, he's going to just take it easy for the next couple of days, seeing as he's going to have to start training on being a pro hero very soon. And Asashi's just like, yeah, do your thing. And so Deku just ends up vibing for the next couple of days until school finally comes around. And Deku finally goes to his first day at UA, where before he even makes it to the classroom, Room, a bunch of his like fellow students who made it to UA knowing that they were going to be in the same like you know grade level as Deku meet Deku by the gate as Deku was greeted to a gigantic mob of people who are just like oh my god you're the kid from the video you know everybody's just like oh my god you know you're so great you're this you're that Deku just says you know he says what he says and he basically ends up just um I really just said he says what he says. All right, look, whatever it is that you think he would have said is literally what he says, all right? And so, you know, he basically ends up walking over to class where a bunch of people from 1A are just like, wait, you're in my class? And Deku is just like, yup, as they're excited, you know, they're having a great time. They're like, let's go, you know what I mean? We have Izuku Midoriya in our class. And when Deku walks in the classroom door, he sees Ida arguing with Bakugo. And Todoroki, Todoroki basically sitting in there, as well as Mineta just in the back, just wondering why girls don't freak out about him in that way. But soon, soon they will when he becomes a, a, a pro hero. <laughs> And so Mineta's just sitting there being creepy in the back and everybody's just like, oh, what a weirdo. And so Deku walking into class immediately gets looked at by Ida and Bakugo, who both give him this stare, just I don't like you. Now Deku just kind of ignores him and he's like, I mean, I guess he can't please everyone as he sits like near Bakugo and Bakugo would just proceed to turn towards Deku as he says, I can't wait to tear you a new one, you little popular kid. I bet you've never been beaten before. As Deku just looks at Bakugo and says, <laughs> beaten me <laughs> please as Bakugo just looks at him and says oh yeah why don't you I t why don't I tear you a new one and let's see what happens as Deku just looks at him and says bring it on but before anything can happen Aizawa would immediately look at them and say all right that's enough settle down it took you guys eight seconds to finally be quiet throw these on and meet me outside Everybody is just like, what? Like, meet me outside. As a rock interrupts and she's like, wait, but what about orientation? And as I was just like, no time. And everybody just grabs their stuff and ends up basically going to the locker rooms where they all end up getting changed. And Deku is just talking to Kirishima, you know, Kaminari. And, you know, they're just, Kaminari just sitting there talking about how he has a lightning quirk like Deku and asks Deku what his quirk is. As Deku honestly stopped really telling people what his quirk was, but this one, one person in particular would basically just be like, you have a copy quirk, right? Because it always seems as if you're using some brand new quirk, so it only makes sense. And Deku would just be like, bingo, that's exactly what my quirk is. As you know, everybody's just like, that's so cool. And Mineta is just over there peeping, but he gets hit in the eye by Jiro, and everybody finally meets Aizawa outside. This is where Aizawa proceeds to essentially throw the ball at Deku, as Deku just looks at Aizawa and he's like, so uh, you want me to throw it as far as I can? And Aizawa just goes, yeah, as far as you can. Deku would proceed to look at Araka as he would say, can you touch this ball real quick? Or no, he just looks at her and says, can I borrow this real quick? As Araka is just like, huh? 
and he's like, use your quirk on me. Araraka just uses it one time and Deku immediately wakens the quirk within himself, using quite literal gravity to remove the gravity of the ball and place gravity back onto himself. He then proceeds to lighten gravity on himself a little bit, but just enough so that he's still on the ground, but like less so that, you know, he's able to put more power into it as Deku would also simultaneously use his father's flame quirk and throw the ball straight into orbit causing Aizawa to just basically have a, some of his hair blow back as he's just like this kid is amazing and we would basically then proceed to have Deku go over to Uraraka as he's like thanks for that as he basically just says you can have it back now and Uraraka's like wait you stole it and Deku's like nah it's just an expression I use as Uraraka's like whew that was scary as Aizawa just looks at Deku and thinks that that kid is some sort of prodigy. After this, Bakugo is just sitting there like, uh, 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 you know, like just wondering how it is that he's going to beat him. But he goes over there thinking that, you know, he's going to put some pizzazz into the ball, spin it a little bit, and it should go far. And so, you know, he grabs the ball, he adds some rotation, and he throws the ball as far as he possibly can. However, the ball doesn't actually end up traveling that far. The ball is thrown about like 800 meters, all right? Literally 800 meters. And Bakugo just sitting there like, I mean, it's better than everybody else. So, he, you know, he's he's cool, but he's angry because it wasn't some overwhelming victory. But Bakugo just thinks that he's going to destroy him in every other aspect. But when it comes to everything else, Deku quite literally steals whoever's quirk is fit for the situation and just uses it, completely destroying everybody, using Mineta's like pop-off quirk to essentially do the same thing as him, using Ida's little speed quirk to essentially like run fast. Actually, nah, I should have it to where he can't use transformation quirks so like Ida has engines I don't think he should be able to do that so instead I'm just gonna say that he uses Bakugo's explosion quirk to clear that area and when he does this Bakugo is enraged thinking that how dare this kid just use his quirk without his permission but Deku was able to use it even better than Bakugo has ever done it before Deku flew through the air in a way that not even Bakugo is able to, and Bakugo would just be bothered by that, getting angered thinking that if it wasn't for that ability to copy others' quirks, he wouldn't be anything. To which Deku would just look at Bakugo and say that, well, if it wasn't for his quirk, he would just be a normal human as well. How does how's that fair that he has to get has has he has to get his ability taken away for him to feel powerful, but if both of their abilities were gone, then they both wouldn't be anything. So that argument is kind of flawed. Bakugo gets angered and says, why you? As he goes over to throw an explosion, but before he can, Aizawa erases Bakugo's quirk. And Deku, seeing this erasure quirk for the first time, immediately copies it. As he turns towards, he turns towards Bakugo, his hair begins to go up into the air as the eyes turn red. And he basically takes Bakugo's quirk as he basically proceeds to sit there and smile as Aizawa is just like this kid just stole my quirk and Deku just basically turned towards Aizawa as he deactivates it and Aizawa tells Bakugo that one more incident like that and he's expelled gone as Bakugo just grunts and says that we'll settle this some other day as Aizawa just says you definitely will tomorrow as Bakugo smirks thinking that tomorrow he's gonna wipe the floor with this kid but Deku he's not worried whatsoever after this everybody just goes up to Deku and it's just like oh my god you did great you know what you're this you're that and people are just like that was manly you know what I mean it was cool that you didn't back down from a challenge Deku just says it you know it's just what he does is he just leaves nonchalantly and basically ends up getting into his car as he drives off or no not him but you know he gets driven off after this, a bunch of girls just start freaking out about how they get to go to the same school as Deku, and Bakugo just goes home talking a whole bunch of smack. But tomorrow, he's finally going to be able to do something. So Bakugo, feeling that he's all big and bad, basically ends up continuing to say stuff, thinking that, you know, he's this, he's that, and, you know, just thinking that he's all this and that, you know, he's all crazy. But in reality, the man really is not and so we would basically just have a little bit of a time skip to the next day where all my busts in the classroom and says i am here walking through the door like a normal person as all my just basically ends up talking to the classroom the classroom gets excited and all my walks over to deku as he just basically tells him that he has a lot of 
of a, a lot of pretty high expectations for him as Deku just says that he promises not to disappoint All Might. I mean, he is somewhat of his hero as All Might just smiles at that and basically ends up telling everybody that in order to become a pro, you have to dress like a pro. And in his eyes, the clothes make the pro, so get suited up as he would click a button and the walls would reveal a bunch of costumes to which everybody would go to the locker room and get suited up. Now, when it comes to Deku's uh, outfit, I honestly haven't even decided what it is that his outfit's going to be. I never even gave this some thought. I guess we could just have it be his father's old costume, pretty much revamped. And when it comes to his father's costume, I have no idea what his costume is. Let's just say, uh, let's just say, you know, he has some, uh... I really don't know what cool costume would suit. I'm just going to say he has his normal Deku costume, except the new and improved version, and it's green. Yeah, basically the same costume that he does in the thumbnail, because the thumbnail costume with like the hair color and changes looks pretty cool. So I'm just going to say he keeps that. Would not wait. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly in a slump. Okay, I don't know what his costume is going to be, but that's irrelevant, okay? And so, you know, he basically ends up just thinking that, you know, it's pretty cool. And, you know, they basically end up going out where the teams get assigned. Now, Aizawa would have told All Might that he wants to pair up a certain Izuku Midoriya versus Bakugo. And so he ends up making sure that they end up being on opposite teams with Deku getting Uraraka on his side and Bakugo getting Todor no, not Todoroki, but Ida. As, you know, Bakugo is pretty salty and angry just thinking that, you know, how dare this kid think he's better than me and so bakugo just ends up being pretty rude to ida and telling him that you know he can watch the bomb four eyes as ida's just like how dare you and bakugo just goes off to look for izuku when deku just tells her raka to go find the bomb room and that he'll meet her up there shortly however right as this happens bakugo comes in turning the corner yelling Deku! As he just made that name for Deku, and he jumps back doing a flip, dodging the explosion. Immediately, Bakugo looks at him and says that he's not going to be dodging this point blank range. As Bakugo just basically pulls the pin of his gauntlet, and the explosion goes off in the entire hallway. As Deku quite literally stands there and is basically just preparing himself to take the the attack. However, this is when, as the explosion would get near him. Deku would proceed to essentially use Todoroki's quirk because he saw it yesterday in action and it still hasn't been 24 hours since then. So Deku has the ability to essentially use a quirk and just get it out of his slot. He has four slots. Think about it like this, four slots and he can fill them up and basically empty them whenever he wants. So he can like, let's say he has fire, uh, ice, electricity and like a gravity quirk. Well, if he takes out the gravity quirk, he can add like a trembling quirk or something like that. You know what I mean? And so Deku basically ends up creating a gigantic wall of ice, which would block the explosion from getting to him. And he basically ends up freezing Bakugo in place by his legs, to which Bakugo would just get angry and shoot a bunch of explosions at the ice, breaking it, immediately rushing over to Deku saying that without his quirk, he wouldn't be so big and mighty without having to steal other people's abilities as Deku would stop in place and look at Bakugo as he says, okay. And he basically turns to him and says, let's see if your little theory works as he literally stops using every quirk, literally any quirk that he has, but he also uses, nah, he's not even going to erase Bakugo's quirk. He could have, he could have, if you run, if you really wanted to be extra disrespectful, he could have erased Bakugo's quirk and been like, let's make it an even match. But that's not what Deku wants. Deku wants to utterly destroy this kid and make it known, make it a point that he is not going to be defeating him whatsoever. And so Deku rushes at him, dodging every single explosion, kicking him over and over again with Bakugo not being able to stop the relentless onslaught. It seems like a taijutsu like onslaught that just does not stop. And Bakugo just keeps talking, telling him how, you know, he's not going to be able to beat him without a quirk. But he realizes, yeah, Deku he basically shits on Bakugo without a quirk, without using anything. Bakugo's anger would rise and rise, getting him to be angry. His vision just gets blurred because he's way too angry to be able to be in a fight. And Deku just uses his martial arts abilities that he's learned throughout the years to essentially just completely outclass Bakugo using a sort of Jin Mori 
fighting style which is like relies on power and speed with his kicks and throwing a couple of punches here and there causing Bakugo to get completely overwhelmed. Deku would have essentially rushed at Bakugo throwing a multitude of kicks in different directions as Bakugo started stumbling back Deku quite literally used the ground as he propelled himself off and literally uppercutted Bakugo with his foot sending him flying into the air as he spun off the ground with his hand and basically ended up kicking Bakugo into a wall. As Bakugo's body ricocheted off of it, Deku quite literally stood back up doing a front like like doing a uh like like repulsing himself back onto the ground as he then rushed at Bakugo and basically Bakugo was standing up and so Deku punched him in the stomach, kicked him in the head and knocked Bakugo clean out as Bakugo just dropped onto the ground and was done for. Deku tied him up with a tape and then proceeded to go into the bomb room where he just outclassed and decimated Ida even worse than what he did to Bakugo. However, he didn't do him as dirty because of the fact that it's like, you know, it's he hasn't done anything too bad to him. He called him out once, so Deku didn't cut him that much slack, but he still cut him some slack. And so Deku, he basically ended up winning the heroes versus villains event. And afterwards, Deku would essentially kind of just go back to the area where everybody is pretty much monitoring what's going on in the little events. Now, as soon as Deku walks in there, a couple of the guys are kind of just staring at Deku like, this is not fair. And the girls are just looking at Deku just thinking that this kid is so strong as Deku just basically sits there and watches the rest of the battles play out. After this, Deku pretty much ends up making his way home and this is when we will basically be having a one week time skip in which everybody in class 1A will essentially be told that they will be needing to get their signatures from their parents in order to be allowed to be going to the USJ. And so everybody would essentially do that with them all being told that yeah they can go. A little bit of convincing had to be done but seeing as they're all wanting to be pro hero someday they have to eventually do this sometime and so all of them would get on the bus and during that one week time skip they would essentially have time go by like you guys would expect Deku during lunch always and I mean always gets approached by a lot of girls so when I say Deku likes to um likes to uh what's it called what's the word I'm looking for he likes to do math with these girls you know what I'm saying he likes to do biology science history you know he likes to go crazy with them so you know every now and then you know Deku takes the house to himself and you know he had a little bit of fun every now and then you know what I'm saying but that's besides the point they're all on the bus as we speak and Suyu is basically just in the back going hey so who do you guys think of the throng in the class Ribbit? you know just with her weird voice because i think suyu has a very weird voice just personal opinion something that i think that a lot of people might get mad at me for saying but it's like kind of what i think you can't change it so yeah i think suyu has a weird voice i don't know just me you might like it don't really care but yeah suyu she's talking and everybody immediately is just like oh yeah who has the strongest quirk here it's definitely izuku everybody would look at deku as they would essentially just be like yeah i mean izuku technically has all of our powers and i'm pretty sure that it's weird because he knows how to use them better than us for some reason as she suyu would just be like well she doesn't have my well he doesn't have my power as deku just basically looks at her and says well i can't exactly copy quirks that change my my genetic makeup per se like let's say let's say i can't copy a quirk that causes me to uh like he can copy shoji's quirk but not perm not me he just can't copy mutation quirks so the ones where basically your whole body is like the same so think spinner he can't copy his quirk you know what i mean but you know he has some stuff on his arsenal that being said though, this is when they would all essentially arrive to the USJ, to which Deku would, you know, he would get there and everybody would basically be around him. All of the girls would be the ones that are sitting near him. And the one that actually got the privilege of sitting next to Deku is Momo. Because Momo has actually been eyeing Deku for a little bit now, but seeing as she's more on the shy side, she sat down and Deku actually ended up choosing to sit next to her. And, you know, Deku and her talked a little bit, but seeing as all the other girls wanted to be there, Deku didn't exactly have any alone time with Momo. And so, you know, of course they arrived to the USJ where all of them essentially <clears throat> 
sorry, where all of them essentially just get there and 13 would proceed to give her very, very boring speech. She would say that, you know, heroes are, are you know, heroes are always in the front lines having to save people, that quirks can be dangerous, everybody would be listening to this, and Deku has already heard this countless amounts of times. His father, Hisashi, told him this and engraved this into his head so many years ago that now when Deku's hearing it, he kind of just is like, oh my god, amateur hour, you know what I mean? Because Deku Deku's dad is a literal pro hero, so when it comes to rescuing people, Deku is pretty much a pro. If Deku truly wanted to, he could probably go in the rankings and become very, very powerful off rip. And so we, after this, are essentially going to have it so that Deku, once he basically hears this from, um, what's it called, from say, um, from 13, yeah, sorry. Basically, a purple mist would arrive or appear in front of all of them. Now, this purple mist would basically arrive as they would just look at it and it would begin to warp gate into 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 like this weird shape, like a cloud thing with yellow eyes in it. We all know what it is. It's Kurogiri. As we essentially just have Deku looking at Kurogiri and he basically just thinks that, wow, they had real villains here. That's pretty cool. But this is when Aizawa would immediately jump down as he would say, those are not fake villains. Get back. And immediately Deku, after hearing this, would basically go into like his hero mode. As instantly, Deku would proceed to look at everybody as he's like, everybody, get ready. As all of them just basically begin to get their quirks ready, Kirishima hardens as Deku immediately takes that quirk first. And Deku would immediately look at Kurogiri as he would use Red Riot Hardening, something that not even Kirishima can do yet. As Deku would use that ability, he would rush at Kurogiri as Kurogiri would basically proceed to like... Uh, warp gate Deku into another area as he would proceed to essentially warp gate the rest of the students onto their respective areas and we would essentially just have Ida run out of there as he would go over to call All Might however I'm pretty sure we won't even be needing All Might Deku would arrive on the boat as immediately he senses that you know there's a lot of villains around him now Deku being the type of person that he is just immediately thinks that you know they're they're water based heroes right there's water there he would look at Suyu and Mineta as they're on the ship and Deku asks Mineta if, you know, he can basically, he can throw a bunch of sticky balls at the ocean as Mineta is just like, what? And it's not an ocean, it's more like a lake, but Mineta is just like, okay, and Deku just tells him to throw a bunch of balls at like, at, at this certain location. As Mineta just does this, he just starts throwing a bunch of balls like crazy. Now, Deku didn't tell him to do this because he actually needed him, but you know, Deku was a nice guy, he's not going to make them both feel unimportant. Deku would then tell Suyu to basically drive the boat over to the shore as Deku would proceed to basically with two hands just aim his hand straight at the water and begin to shoot so much fire like so much heat into the water that the water would basically get to a point where it becomes like the temperature of a hot tub and a bunch of the villains immediately realizing this it's too late Deku continues to crank up the heat until it's literally boiling point temperature and he would literally just leave it at that as a lot of the villains would just be like what and you know they start rushing to get out of the water and some of them do but by the time that they're out there they are too damaged from you know the burn like the third degree burns that they just got from the water to try anything so the ones that do make it to shore you know they're good and the ones that don't they basically end up uh essentially getting saved by Deku who has very high heat tolerance he ends up having his uh, like help out like seven guys and this is when Deku would basically tell Mineta and Suyu that they can end up going over there where everybody else is that they're gonna need reinforcements as Suyu and Mineta say what are you gonna do Midoriya Deku would look at them as he would say well it's clear I'm gonna go take out the boss right both of them would look at Deku as Deku would just say come on trust just go without me I can handle myself Deku would look at them as they would just look at Deku and be like okay well don't lose as Deku would say I promise I won't and Deku would then proceed to immediately look at the villains as, you know, he would just look over there at their direction and he would just see Aizawa fighting a bunch of villains like at one time. Now, Deku being the person that he is would immediately jump on in there and shoot flames at a bunch of the villains straight from his hands as the villains would start basically getting burnt a little bit and he would pretty much pull an endeavor as he just starts destroying the villains left and right. 
also would rush at a couple of them using Red Riot, Unbreakable form, and he would begin to pretty much just start abolish or just destroying them. Sorry, abolishing is the wrong word, but destroying all the villains very, very easily. Deku is having a very good time taking out all these villains, and so we would essentially just have Deku continuing to go in there and just, just destroying these these villains, right? Until Aizawa and Deku basically end up going through all 70 of the villains that were left. And after this, Shigaraki would begin to scratch his neck as he would say, it's not fair, it's not fair, he's cheating. As you know, he would basically look at the Nomu, or no, at Kurogiri as he would say, Kurogiri, bring out the Nomu. Immediately, a gigantic bird-like creature with a brain at the top of its head would appear. As Deku seeing this, would immediately just think that this might be a problem. And this is when Shigaraki would rush at, you know, he would begin to rush at Deku as he would say, Nomu kill the hero i'll take care of the brat and shigaraki being overconfident would rush at deku having his decay quirk active now deku seeing this wanting to know what exactly the quirk is that shigaraki has would basically just continue to watch him as he would dodge all of shigaraki's attacks while aizawa basically gets punched what without without all the rest of his quirks but he still has a super strength so the nomu punches aizawa and it hurts a lot and Aizawa basically gets sent flying, with the Nomu following him and bringing him back to the location. However, as that was happening, Deku was basically dodging all of Shigaraki's attacks. He would basically try to swipe at Deku a bunch of times, and Deku would simply weave. Have you guys ever seen a boxing match? Deku would essentially just do that, backing up slowly, slowly, until Shigaraki ends up basically falling. And he would grab the ground with both all five fingers, as the ground would basically begin to disintegrate. Now, Deku seeing this would immediately say, no way as he would immediately copy the quirk and his like his entire aura would change deku now has three abilities that he's copying now one thing that i never actually ended up acknowledging was that deku's quirk you know how i basically said that he turns like a sort of red like god key aura looking type thing that only happens when deku has four quirks active at a time if not then basically the only thing that happens is deku's eyes change to a red color whenever he's using somebody else's quirk that doesn't belong to him and so deku would basically rush at shigaraki as he would grab grab the ground and the ground would begin to disintegrate like just completely be destroyed as shigaraki would be terrified at this thinking that this kid just stole his quirk he's thinking that he has some sort of all for one power and shigaraki would be terrified and you know the 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 decay would basically almost hit shigaraki but deku would basically blitz over there and punch shigaraki so hard right in the gut he causes shigaraki's blood to come spewing out of his mouth as he punches him and he almost ricochets against the wall but kuragiri is able to basically open a portal behind shigaraki and drop him onto the ground as shigaraki lands there and kuragiri then basically warp gates in front of shigaraki saying that he will not hurt his master as deku would then basically look at look at kurogiri as he would say think again as immediately all five fingers were turned like this sort of orange golden look like for an explosion because he copied bakugos and he would shoot a bunch of ap shots from all five fingers which would actually end up piercing kurogiri's metal part his weak spot and end up causing Kurogiri to basically be weakened. As Deku would rush over there, and it's at this point that Kurogiri and Shigaraki would warp get out of there, just barely making it out. With the Nomu being left there with no orders, the Nomu would quite literally stop fighting and just stand there. As it has Aizawa's head gripped in its clutches, All Might would then arrive as he has an angry look on his face, and he proceeds to come down as he punches the Nomu one good time as it gets flung off of Aizawa, and... All Might basically realizes that the Nomu is very, very powerful. So he would throw one of his strongest punches, barely being able to send the Nomu out of the USJ. And, you know, he doesn't actually end up sending him flying so far that the Nomu can't be recovered. But he sends him outside of the USJ to the point where they could recover the Nomu and find out what it was. So, in this version of events, they end up finding out how the Nomus are genetically modified and created earlier than they do in canon. So, you know, that's a good side to what if Deku would have copied Quirk. And after this, we essentially just have the USJ cleanup happening as they basically get a one week break off of school. During this time, we would essentially just have all the people of Class 1A wondering, you know, how it is that Deku was able to go down there and like act as if he was a pro hero, like he's been in this situation before. Deku would simply say that his father is one of the 
top one was one of the top 100 heroes at the time when all might was around his hero name was i don't know and you know everybody would just be shocked as they're just like your dad was you know insert name here and they're just shocked they're just like no wonder you have such an amazing quirk deku would say yeah as you know they would all just be thinking that you know it must be nice but deku would look at them as he would say that you know you guys can you guys have amazing quirks too if you didn't you wouldn't be in ua just be grateful for what you do have as thanksgiving is right around the corner <laughs> in case you're watching this when you know when it currently comes out then it's probably going to be th whoa this is crazy. This is like my Thanksgiving gift to you guys. I just realized that. This is literally my Thanksgiving gift to you guys. Wow, that's that's a little crazy to think about. But yeah, tangent aside, um, how are you guys thinking about the... What are you guys thinking about the video so far? Do you like it? If you do, then, you know, maybe consider going down there and hitting that like button. Maybe United States have smashed the like button with your elbow. See if you can like the button with your elbow. As well as, uh, you know, maybe hit that notification bell with your nose so you're always notified for every future upload that I post on the channel. That being said, let's get right back into the story. Obviously, the one-week break goes down and Deku proceeds to essentially just continue to, you know, train on his physical abilities. Train on his body, simply work out out as well as hang out with a couple of uh friends in case you can't tell well definitely can't tell i'm doing quotation marks because they're a little more than than friends if you know what i'm putting down and so we basically just have it to where deku is essentially um just having a pretty decent time during that one week break where they all essentially end up returning and the entire situation with Bakugo calling everybody extras as well as them all being informed about the USJ would go down. That being said, we're kind of just going to be skipping over to the day of the USJ because I mostly like to cover the funny and or interesting events in my what ifs. Seeing as none of that's really going to change and it's kind of just going to be them in the classroom, that seems a little boring. So we're just going to skip all over that and we're going to get straight into the USJ. As soon as we get to the USJ actually, Midnight is essentially going to look at Deku as she would say that it's his time to give the speech now deku completely unprepared just like wait i had to give a speech at midnight would just look at deku and she would say yeah you have to give a speech kid come on get up there i know you'll do great deku would grab the mic as he would just basically look at the crowd as he would tap it being like testing testing and everybody would be quiet Deku would then look us. He would just look at them as he would say, Psych, how are we doing today? As everybody would be like, Yeah, ah, you know, awesome. As Deku just sitting there and he just smiles. This is when Deku would look at everybody as he would say, All of us, every single student here, we have all worked so hard to get to UA. And today, today is the day where we put all of that hard work to show. Today, we will show all these pro heroes, all these top heroes, all these ranked officials how much power we have and why we are ua every course has the ability to shine and we will all make sure that we show up today for everybody that came to watch so if i can if i can have all of you guys please join me as i say class or no 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 as he would say ua high school is the best or something like that as he would just get everybody hyped up and you know people would just start screaming they'd be like oh my god i love that kid you know what i'm saying and then we would just have a sashi in the stands being like that's my son as you know people just look at him and they're like wait aren't you and he just nods and everybody's just like oh my god you know we got a pro hero over here retired pro hero as you know they're just like that's your son and you know it just goes viral on twitter everybody's just like bro like the pro hero this 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 and this is you know izuku midoriya's son it goes crazy you know everybody's having a good time and it's just a cool vibe after this we would essentially just have midnight announcing the next couple of things that they're going to be having to do in order for them all to compete in the ua sports festival with the first thing actually being an obstacle course or a race now everybody would essentially line up as they would all get into their respective places deku would have actually ended up running into nejere one more time as he would ask if he can show her what his quirk is, what his what her quirk is Nejere, you know, she would, as she's a pretty big fan of Deku, and she would just look at him and she would say, Come on, I know you want to use my quirk. She could she would say, just ask. I mean, we're not on a we're not exactly on a get, get to know each other basis. As Deku already, you know, I'm saying Deku already went ham on those. So, you know, Deku did his thing, and you know, he ended up getting the the quirk. 
as essentially he gets right on the finish on the starting line and as soon as midnight blows the starting pistol everybody would essentially look as Todoroki would slam his foot down on the ground and he would freeze a bunch of people in place as that happens Deku would activate Nezure's quirk getting up off the ground so that he didn't get frozen and he would then begin to essentially use that quirk to fly over all of the obstacle course like when it comes to the zero pointers he pretty much just goes through them by using um Kirishima's quirk because he was able to uh, see him and he just copied Unbreakable Red Riot. So he flew straight into a zero pointer, breaking it, causing it to explode, making a chain reaction. So Todoroki gets thrown off guard and he actually gets knocked off of his ice, causing Bakugo to go past him. And it would basically just be Bakugo and Deku. Deku would immediately get a cool idea as Bakugo would say, Don't you even think about it. But Deku would do it as it's too late, as he would have thrown out Kirishima's quirk. Work, and he would basically begin to use explosions and Nezure's ability to propel himself faster and faster and faster. Deku would be going so fast in the air that it is just not funny and Bakugo would basically just sit like basically be left in Deku's dust as Deku would have completely and utterly destroyed everybody in the race portion. Now, after this, Deku would be awarded a 10 million point headband for his efforts, as Deku would just smile, thinking that, you know, that's actually pretty cool. And, you know, we would basically just have Deku waiting for the next event in, in terms of the USJ. After this, we would essentially just have Midnight saying that the next event will be, uh, let's see, sh uh, Capture the Flag? Capture the flag. Yep, capture the flag. Now, this little capture the flag event is honestly just going to go like this. Where every single person who basically ended up passing in the original, all the team makeups and all the people who were in the final battles are going to be on one team. And the people who, you know, didn't... There's going to be four teams. No, no, no. There's going to be... Yeah, there's going to be four teams, all right? And it's going to be one team versus one team and another team versus another team. And so, you know, all the people who you would expect... Like, it would be randomized to the point where only the people who actually really ended up passing in the canonical canon version of My Hero for the little battles ended up actually winning this part. That being said, this little capture the flag event, I basically just put it here because I did not. Like, I, I mean this when I say this. I hate the cavalry battle portion of like the my hero academia story it's so whack it's so weird to cover because like it's like oh like it sucks he has to rely on other people for him to win that's whack like our, my man deku is so broken if he wanted to he could be a one-man team and solo everybody but that would be unfair so that being said they all basically end up winning all the people who won and deku's first battle is going to be against shinso and so Deku would go up to the stands as he would basically get ready for the first battle to which in which Bakugo would basically walk over to Deku as he would be waiting for him outside of his room. Bakugo would then look at Deku as he would say, I've been training ever since the last battle. Don't think it's going to be so easy this time. Oh, and Deku, use your quirk this time. I'm going to utterly destroy you. There's no way you're going to beat me, Deku. As he would walk out of the room and Todoroki would then walk in as he would look at Deku and say, I'm not going to come in and challenge you like Bakugo did. I'm just going to state the obvious. I'm going to destroy you, Izuku Midoriya. And there's not going to be a thing you're going to be able to do about it. As Deku would look at Todoroki, he would just look at his phone as he sends his mom a message. As she's just like, you're doing a great job, honey. Deku just answers, thank you. With like a smiley face as Todoroki walks out. And Deku just walks over to Todoroki as he's like, he's like, don't count on it, bud. As Todoroki just looks at Deku with this angry expression, and Deku just gives him a smirk. After this, Deku would go out into the crowd as, you know, he would be walking into the stands for his first battle. In which, I'm guessing I never covered this part since, you know, I know I didn't. But when he walks into the little arena, half of the crowd, and I mean it, half of the crowd is like teenage girls around Deku's age. All right. They're like these 14 year olds, these like 11 year olds to 17 to 18 to like, like even 20s of people who are just sitting here going, Isoko, you know, just going crazy. At one point, one girl ends up throwing uh, a piece of a uh, piece of the things that she wears that aren't meant to be seen at like into the UA, into the UA Sports Festival stands. And she ends up getting kicked out. And so <laughs> it's pretty funny. And Deku just laughs, you know, it goes viral on, 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 on Instagram. And, you know, the girl just becomes a meme. You know what I mean? 
And so that's a good thing because Deku now is going to go meet her outside when the sports festival is over. So look forward to that. But Deku would just be laughing so hard as Shinso would just be getting angrier and angrier, feeling bitter jealousy towards Deku because he has so much. And in terms of what Shinso thinks he has, he has nothing. Shinso would look at Deku as he would say, it must be nice to have all the fame, all the girls, the most amazing quirk. I bet it must be nice to be gifted and be given everything that you have. As Deku would look at Shinso and immediately his whole vibe would change. Because if, if there's one thing that Deku hates, is people that feel bad about themselves and proceed to like just badmouth the people who work for what they have. Look, Deku may have a strong quirk, but he worked for that. If he would have just had that quirk, never trained, never done anything, his quirk would have literally been something that it almost was never there. It may have been just a fluke where Doctor told him he had a quirk, but he may have thought it was too weak to become a pro hero. But no. Deku, through hard work and determination, was able to use that quirk in order to basically, well, transcend what people thought he was. And that's something that Deku does not take lightly when people say. You know what I mean? So immediately, Deku would look at him as he would say, you wouldn't know anything about it. But as soon as he does that, Shinso would smirk as we would essentially just have Shinso getting Deku into his mind control state. Now, Deku inside here would pretty much just like literally because he's not a one for all user. I'm going to be saying that things would actually go a lot different than, you know, what normally happens in the world of MHA. Deku, after doing this, would immediately like see himself in like this this sort of like strange world where he would also see Shinso in his mind and it would kind of be like an internal battle with himself which Deku would slowly have to win and claw his way out of in order for him to regain his his well ability to control his own body and so Shinso would basically just smirk as he would say walk off and Deku would be walking off the stage as a bunch of girls are just yelling Deku no and inside of Deku's mental state he would basically hear all the cries all the cheers everybody telling him not to give up and to try you know to keep going Deku would hear that as he would push and he would instantly be able to break out now I'm not gonna lie that was a little bit of plot armor but you know we're not gonna talk about that and Deku would then basically proceed to look at Shinso as he would say ah so you got a little brainwashing quirk huh well why don't you get a taste of your own medicine Deku would say that Shinso would say what do you mean and you know Deku would just say what do you mean what do you think I mean as Shinso would say, I don't know, but as soon as he says that and he answers Deku's question, Shinso would immediately be put under Deku's mind control. As Deku would rush at Shinso and punch him straight in the stomach so hard that Shinso, like his body, even though he has no control over it, would just cough out like blood. As Deku would then basically kick Shinso so hard that Shinso gets sent into the grass and is completely knocked out. Everybody would be wondering what exactly happened in that match as Deku would just start waving everybody in the crowd just being like, don't worry guys, I won, I won't give up. And, you know, Deku would then basically proceed to go over as, you know, we then have Uraka versus Bakugo and the rest of the first battles that happened as we would then basically be having Deku versus Todoroki. Now, as soon as the battle starts, Endeavor would yell over the railings. He would say, Shoto! As Todoroki would look up at the, at the area and he would just have an angry look on his face. He would immediately send a gigantic geyser of ice, which honestly, if he would have let it go, like Deku would have let the entire geyser go, that thing probably would have hurt people in the stands. And so what Deku basically did was he copied Todoroki's quirk as he shot out the flames. Todoroki's flames right back at the ice as he shot it from the exact arm that Todoroki can shoot it from and he would begin to melt the ice the iceberg before it could even hit him Todoroki would get angered as he would say I'm not using that quirk as Deku would look at him as he would say what are you talking about and Todoroki would begin to just shoot more and more ice at him telling him that he's not gonna win as he would say he's gonna win with his own power as basically Deku would continue shooting fire as he just slowly walks over at Todoroki and Todoroki is slowly just getting pushed more and more and more off of the ring as Todoroki would then look at Deku as Deku would basically ask him why he won't fight he, he asked him why he won't use his flames is he not strong enough 
Does he not think that he can handle it? As Todoroki would look at him and say, you wouldn't understand. And Deku would basically just say, try me. Todoroki would then look at him and he would say, when you have an old man like mine, then you wouldn't want to use those flame, those flame abilities. As Deku would say, that's what it's about? A grudge against your dad? Are you serious? As he would look at him and say, are you, are you, are you an idiot or something? He would literally grab Todoroki by the collar of his UA uniform as he would say, all those people up there paid good money to watch us perform and you're going to let them all down like this because of some petty grudge? Todoroki would look at him as he would say, get your hands off me and he would shoot flames at, at Deku. As Deku would fall back a bit, he would then say, good, now keep it up. As Todoroki would say, you asked for it. He would then basically begin to charge up his strongest attack as he would say, flash freeze. And Deku, he would quite literally do the same back, literally mocking Todoroki. Todoroki would begin to charge up his flash freeze attack as Deku would do the same thing, except his version would be even more powerful than Todoroki's. And he would shoot the attack, causing Todoroki's body to quite literally get flung into to the stands as it would lead a crater it would leave a crater of Todoroki's body embedded into it as his body hit the concrete so hard that he literally embedded his body like a like a um have you guys ever seen me uh a mixing powder no not a mixing powder but a uh a like little a mold um, I literally already said it, a mold literally what it is it's a mold um he would basically leave a mold of Todoroki's body and the crowd, like the stadium, would go silent. As Endeavor, seeing his son lose, would immediately bang his hand on the railing and say, Shoto! As everybody in the crowd would just completely engulf his scream as they would say, Midoriya! Everybody would just start being like, let's go! As everybody's just excited, like they're all having a good time at the fact that like our boy Deku basically just won. Now... Deku would look at this as he would just be like, yo, this is this is kind of lit. This is kind of lit. You know what I mean? And he would quite literally walk off of the state like the stands as Bakugo already won his next match. And the final match of the UA Sports Festival event is going to be happening on the... No, I'm totally kidding. There's not going to be a next part. You probably already saw from the title, but it's a movie. So, you know, I'm not going to not going to split it up into parts. That being said, though, guys, um... What's it called? Deku basically proceeds to, um, whatchamacallit. Deku basically just proceeds to walk off the stage as he gets ready for his next match. And what Deku does is quite literally nothing. He sits in that room and is on his phone just on YouTube binging Zether's content. As he listens to, to Zether talk about some sponsor, talking about some fandom, like fa fandom, fandom. I think, I think, I think he heard that right. As you know, you just hear that. And then you basically just hear him, you know, rambling on about how Deku, you know, he has Gojo's powers. And Deku's just sitting there like, huh, you know, that's crazy. As, you know, we basically just have him be like, all right, whatever. As he basically proceeds to grab his stuff and just be like, okay, so what do I do? As he kind of just sits there and he proceeds to, well, essentially just lay there until he finally gets called back out. And when Bakugo comes out, everybody in the crowd is just like, boo! you know they're all booing Bakugo saying you're gonna lose to Midoriya anyways why are you trying and Bakugo would just let out a grudge as he's just angry at the fact that you know nobody's sitting there encouraging him you know they're all just sitting there looking at him like boo you know like you're gonna lose and you know it's clearly not a good time for him but the second that Deku comes out and people can see him they're like oh my god it's Deku as everybody's just excited and you know everyone's just having a good time the the environment is just so nice like if if i could describe it it basically feels like a world cup series for like football or like wait no that's yeah soccer or like the finals of the nfl i think the super bowls yeah that's what those are called or you know like an nba finals game you know what i mean like the crowd is just loving it right and so Deku gets onto the stage with Bakugo as Bakugo looks at Deku and says, all that confidence is going to get you killed one day. You know that? As Deku just looks at Bakugo and says, probably, but definitely not by you. As Bakugo just looks at Deku and he is just 
angry and Deku just looks at him as he smirks and everybody's like whoa did he just say that they're like ah snap as Deku just looks at Bakugo and he basically just proceeds to look at him as he says all right well I haven't really been practicing this one too much but uh I figured I'm gonna put you in your place by being a mirror as Bakugo would just be like what are you talking about and this is when Deku would immediately look as Bakugo rushes at him and Deku's eyes would immediately flash a red color as Bakugo knows what's about to happen. Now right before he goes to shoot an explosion, he basically propels himself into the air as he would start spinning, right? He would start spinning getting ready as he would just say that he's going to end it all in one move as he would scream, how it's her impact. And before Bakugo can even rush at him, Deku would quite literally proceed to put his hands like in a weird like like he would put both of his hands together he would open his fingers but he would like you guys know when we made like the alien peace sign when we were like all kids except he would put the thumb and the other two fingers together and open them and from that a gigantic concentrated explosion would shoot at bakugo as bakugo basically has to stop like spinning in order to barely be able to dodge and that beam would cause Bakugo's like left side of his hair to get burnt to a crisp so it falls off after this Deku looks at Bakugo as he sees the hair fall and he is like angry he is beyond angry Bakugo rushes at Deku as he's like how dare you as you know he just lunges right at Deku and Deku would then basically proceed to have these explosions come out of his foot as B Deku pretty much rushes at Bakugo and shoots explosions from from his hands as he then spins like right in front of Bakugo and with his foot he literally uses a kick like that's fueled by an explosion to get Bakugo's head to pretty much almost get kicked off of his shoulders as Bakugo's entire body just is flung out of the ring but before he can get completely out Bakugo saves himself with an explosion just barely yelling out he's not gonna win but right as Bakugo goes right back into the ring, Deku already has a gigantic explosion as he puts both of his hands out in front of him and says, DIE! He would immediately shoot that gigantic explosion which causes a massive amount of smoke to rise as Bakugo is flung right into the concrete and his body is literally leaving a mold of itself into the, like, the walls. As everybody is just like, Deku! you know they're all just excited they're all happy they're you know it's just a good time and afterwards Deku would basically just have the crowd going crazy as Deku's just waving at everybody everybody's just you know they're all happy at the fact that you know the person that they wanted to win to win as even the people who didn't like firstly want Deku to win and the parents of some of the kids that were competing were even excited because Deku just released so many good positive vibes and so after this we would essentially just proceed to um we would essentially just proceed to go to where Deku is up on the stage getting handed the medal for first place as Baku goes up there being restrained by the changes going like just angry at the fact that Deku won as you know Deku is given the medal by All Might and you know he smiles telling Deku that he expects so many more things from him as Deku just looks at All Might and says I'll always I'll always you know meet your expectations All Might as All Might smiles and then goes over to Todoroki as he would give him his thing as he's in third place and Todoroki would just be looking down that whole time thinking about what Deku said he didn't say it in the nice way that our normal Izuku Midoriya did but he kind of just said it in the like realest way he could like the man is dumb how is he going to refuse to use his fire side literally something that is almost more powerful than his eyes side just because he has some sort of grudge and Todoroki's just thinking about that so he's just sitting there quiet while Deku is just sitting there and All Might would just say, is there anything you would like to see out of the crowd at Zuku Midoriya? Deku would look at All Might as he would say, yeah, there is only one thing. I would like to tell all of you guys about the sponsor for today's video. Now guys, the sponsor of today's video is actually going to be not fandom, but Bunches. Now guys, Bunches is an, is an app that you guys can basically download from your phone, either on Android or on iOS. Now, if you guys go to the App Store or the Play Store, you guys can basically go and find an app by the name of Bunches. Now, by downloading it, you guys will immediately be sent to a thing, which will, which will you know, essentially you click on it, and when you do, you sign up as, you know, you sign up for the app like any other things. 
you know your 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 phone number your gmail nothing too crazy nothing insane however when you do sign up you basically are going to be able to join a bunch of groups and if you guys have ever wanted to talk to me then this is your chance as i just made a new little group chat that anybody can actually join by simply going on the app and once you get on there there should be a little location looking button you click on it and then you will be sent to a thing that says discover bunches you type in olympus because that's the that's the name of my of my of my chat and the first person that's already joined is dank god the thumbnail maker of the videos you know the man is an absolute chad and so you guys can actually join the bunches and trust me it's limited access only there won't really be that much room for so many people so it's basically first come first serve if you guys go there you guys will be able to chat with me recommend me some what if ideas basically just tell me anything you guys have ever wanted to know and there will be like nothing stopping you guys from coming to chat with me so if you guys want to talk to your boys Together, then definitely download bunches and come hop on the chat with me and many 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 other people who are going to be on there it's going to be dope and in case you don't have discord you know if you have discord i'm going to be more active on this so i would recommend hopping on bunches and uh with that being said though guys that's basically it for the sponsor so after telling everybody that everybody in the stands would just be like bunches B bunches we gotta go download this app they immediately rush over to the app store as you know there's only 50 places everybody's tapping their screen frantically and 50 people make it as they're like yes you know a bunch of it's a bunch of girls some guys and basically they're just excited as deku's on there as he's just like flooded with all these messages everybody's just like like yo deku you know deku's just like sitting there just texting everybody and it is overwhelming this man but you know he knew what he signed up for he knew what he was doing and so Deku just smiles and after this they all go back to class. Now we're kind of just going to skip back over to the day where they're in their classrooms and they are all told about the UA internships as well as their pro hero names. Now when it comes to what Deku picks for his pro hero name, he's actually going to be picking the name Raijin. Now in case you guys don't know why he's picking that, it's because recently your boy's channel got hacked and uh, I had to make a second channel called Raijin. So in case you guys haven't subbed there, Click the link down below in the description and sub to that second channel. Okay, enough shameless plugging. I have plugged way too much this video, okay? I'm sorry for that. But, um, yeah, you guys can basically, you know, second channel, you know, more, <laughs> more shameless plugging. Nah, but seriously, guys, uh, get back into the story. So, yeah, his Nero name is Raijin, basically meaning Thunder God. And he chose that just because he's, you know, he's into the mythology stuff like that. And so, you know, that's really the only reason why he chose that. That being said, we would basically just have Deku picking that as when it comes to what his internship is going to be, he's actually going to be going to the agency of, let's see, what's a cool agency? The little, the little thing with the uh, stain is probably still going to be happening. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Who should, De honestly guys, I really have no idea who Deku should go with. So here's what we're going to be saying. All right, check me out, check me out. So when it comes to that, the Hosu City incident is still going to be happening. You know, the Ida is still going to be going with Manual. Everybody else is still going to be going to their normal agencies. And we're just going to be saying that Deku, seeing an offer from the number two hero Endeavor, ends up basically taking that offer. So the internship with Endeavor basically goes a lot different than many of you guys would expect now when deku arrives to the agency endeavor would immediately greet deku as he would just look at him and say kid if you were anybody except for your son for your, your your father's you know son i would probably not treat you with too much respect but seeing as you're the son of a pro hero which i used to which i used to intern with then I'm gonna treat you with some respect. I'm gonna teach you how to use that quirk of yours and it's gonna be even more powerful than it's ever been. As Deku, it just doesn't even see Todoroki anywhere to be found. Like Todoroki did not even go with his father. Instead, he ended up going to some other pro heroes agency because he was like angry at his dad and Endeavor actually ends up taking the time to train Deku. Not being, well, he's still mean about it, but not as mean as he normally would. Because Endeavor still hasn't chilled out as a character up to this point. So Endeavor is still not exactly the best person. But seeing as Deku's father is, you know, kind of trained him. He's going to, you know, do his best that he can to help train Deku. 
Now, when he does this, he kind of comes to find out that Deku is more than ready to handle himself as a pro hero. So what Endeavor basically ends up teaching him in and of itself is how to run a hero agency. Deku ends up learning things like this and that, and then the host of stuff finally happens. Obviously, the League of Villains and the Shigaraki and Stain stuff would still end up happening. Ida still ends up trying to go, you know, fight the hero killer. And um, Ida, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, rest in peace. Yeah, Ida's dead. He's 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 dying. There's not going to be no Deku's with, you know, best friends with Ida because that's not the case. And so Ida, sorry to tell you, man, but you're dead. Stain, you live to see another day. No moves. You're not so lucky. When the explosions go off, immediately the Endeavor Agency is war warned. As you know, they basically get a jet and they fly out to Hosu City, to which they basically end up arriving. And it's it's a very big scene. Immediately when they arrive, Endeavor goes over to one of the Nomus as he just destroys the brain, killing the Nomu instantly. Deku, seeing that flames are very useful against it, would take out Endeavor's, you know, he would copy him. Except when he uses the flames, the flames turn blue and he would just start destroying a bunch of the robots as Endeavor seeing these blue flames would think back to Dobby. No, um, yeah, yeah, Dobby or Toya. Toya Todoroki, as he would just think back to his son and seeing Deku in action would just have Endeavor have so many things going through his mind. But Deku would go left and right, destroying Nomus. I'm pretty sure it was only four. So he would destroy one of them. And then afterwards, he would basically see a flying Nomu coming in trying to catch him from behind. But what Deku basically ends up doing is stealing Manuel's quirk and creating a gigantic water dragon out of like the uh, fire extinguisher, which is currently shooting at water as he shoots it right at the nomu and the nomu ricochets against the building uh, meaning the nomu basically gets flung into the building and bounces off okay after this deku basically rushes over to the nomu as he just looks at it and says good riddance as he just fries the nomu atomizing it and the final nomu the strongest one at that comes rushing in at endeavor as endeavor is still thinking about toya deep in thought just frozen in place deku yells out endeavor behind you as endeavor just turns around and the nomu would rush at endeavor as it flings him into a building and deku would then rush at the nomu as he creates a gigantic fire arrow and a bow as he would just shoot an arrow straight at the nomus head causing it to explode and deku would basically take out all of the nomus in one fell swoop afterwards he would go over to endeavor and ask him if he's okay as endeavor would just be like yeah i'm fine he would get way more quiet than he was before that as you know he wouldn't take any interviews he would just get out of there and it would basically just be on the news that deku basically ended up saving endeavor from a, a hero accident endeavor wouldn't really be bothered about this because it's true he did save him and Endeavor would just be thinking about Toya a lot, just kind of quiet about those things and, you know, things like that. That being said, though, guys, at this point, I need to say one thing. I'm not going to be making some, like, Thanksgiving, like, video for you guys. So instead, I'm kind of just going to say here. Today, Thanksgiving. And I just have to say thank you to every single person who subscribes to the channel. It truly, truly, truly means a lot to me that you guys are a community which I can wake up to every day, make a fire with it for, and you guys will always seem to enjoy it. It means a whole lot to me, and if it wasn't for any of you guys, I wouldn't be having this amazing job that is YouTube. So, quick thing, just thank you, all right? Thank you to all you guys. That being said, back into the what if. They would all basically return to the classrooms with Bakugo and everybody getting the same experience that they did. Bakugo was with Best Genus, meaning that he didn't really get that much experience. So everybody basically ends up, um, what's it called? Everybody basically ends up just going back to class as they end up having the little pro hero race. Deku, of course, ends up winning because he ends up taking, let's see, he just ends up using Bakugo's quirk to, you know, com basically complete the thing. But in all honesty, you know what Deku could have done? Matter of fact, this is what he's going to do. Now, like, I take back what he said about using Bakugo's quirk. Deku doesn't like using his quirk. And so instead, what he would do is use his father's flame quirk and create flame wings on his back, which he would basically use to propel himself into the air and just fly over to All Might as he would rescue him. After this, All Might would explain to all of them that they're now going to be having the, um, the forest training arc which they would all basically be told to go home and essentially fill out like some form saying that you know they're allowed to go to the forest training arc 
they all would do so and you know then we would have the mall stuff happening which wouldn't actually end up leading to no shigaraki incident because he was not about to go up to deku and try to catch him off guard he knows deku was gonna fold this man like a lawn chair like like bro if you don't want to get like if you don't want to get like folded like an omelet then scramble you know what i mean and so Deku would basically just have a normal mall experience and so all of them finally end up getting to take their final exams which I'm just kind of kind of gonna breeze through because I really don't think that the final exams arc is really that important so everything that really happened in terms of the written exam just think Deku passes all right and when it comes to the other students their basic um their situations end up going the same that they do in canon when it comes to who deku and bakugo end up fighting against is well all my as many of you guys were probably expecting and when this actually happens deku is very much excited deku is happy and at this point you guys may be wondering is, is four quirks the limit of deku is that all he can handle no after all of these extra you know after this extra month like months of training that he's been in ua for he actually ended up learning how to stock one more quirk onto himself and when he does that his hair kind of spikes into the air and he's like he basically has this like aura all around him that allows deku to get even more powerful not only that but the quirks that he's able to copy now become even stronger than what they did before and deku just seems to get more and more broken every day you know what i mean and so afterwards we would essentially just basically have deku um as you know he would grab all of his stuff you know what i mean like he would grab all of his things and just put on his costume you know what i mean him and bakugo are just in the area and bakugo does not want to listen to deku like he hates this man deku with a passion so bakugo ends up deciding that he's gonna go fight all might by himself and that he'd rather fail than have to team up with this loser this side character who came in out of nowhere and took all of his glory from him as deku just wonders why bakugo is the way he is but I guess some people just can't be fixed, you know what I mean? And so Deku just basically ends up just accepting the fact that, you know, he's gonna have to fight against All Might by himself. So what Deku does is he basically just ends up thinking that if that's the case, then he's gonna be needing some pretty powerful quirks. So what Deku ends up doing before all of this basically can end up going down is using number one, Uraraka's quirk. Number two, his father's quirk. He literally never ever uses like he like one of those slots is always filled up by his father's quirk that's how deku keeps his father close every morning deku always sees his father uses quirk and that's kind of his trademark quirk to use he would also end up using a quirk of another student which he actually ended up seeing in the hallways when he was talking to nejere mirio so he has permeation literal permeation he also is going to be having Nezre's quirk because it's like, you know, he was kind of there for that. And then he is also going to be having a sort of a, 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 a Todoroki's quirks. I mean, Todoroki's quirk just would really come with eyes. So should, I, should we really give him that? Nah, he would also have Aizawa's quirk. Come on now, with Aizawa's quirk, this is going to be the like the craziest little thing ever. Watch, here's what's going to happen. So Deku would basically proceed to look at All Might as, you know, All Might is just sitting there, you know what I mean? All Might is just sitting there after he just destroyed Bakugo, basically using ragdolling Bakugo, because that's literally what happened. He ragdolled Bakugo, and uh, I don't know if you guys can hear it right now, but a bunch of dogs are, like, barking really, really loud outside, so if you guys do hear it, apologies. But, yeah, he ragdolled Bakugo very, very badly, and in case you guys ever hear, like, the click of a mouse, like, throughout this video, just know that was me pausing the recording and playing it again, because... You know, I can't be bothered to edit the click of a mouse out. You know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. And every time that you guys hear that, it's because I'm recording at like a different time in the day. I usually take little breaks between my recordings whenever I record movie what ifs. And when I don't, the end of a what if usually feels a little plain because I don't really go into detail because of the fact that I'm too tired. So I started implementing this system. Let me know what you guys think. That being said, though, guys, this is when Deku would essentially proceed to like walk on over there to All Might as deku basically has every quirk active at the same time like his permeation ability obviously not you know he he has the gravity on himself he lightened it so much to the point where he has so much speed you know he has the wings and he would look at all might as all might is just ready you know what i mean he's ready to get into this 
But Deku would then smirk as he would then think that this is going to be too easy. He would rush in at All Might as he would throw a punch and All Might would throw it as well as they would clash together and think of a scene reminiscent to All Might versus the Nomu. They would start throwing punches back and forth and back and forth until All Might would basically get flung back. And this is when Deku would look at All Might as he would say, let's see how powerful you are without your quirk. As he would immediately activate Aizawa's quirk and All Might would just be thinking, oh no. And right as this happens, All Might would shrink into his small might form. As Deku like rushes at All Might and right before he was about to punch him, he realizes that he turns so small. He would then permeate into All Might so that he doesn't hit him. And he would look at him as he would be like, who are you? As All Might would just say, kid, we gotta talk. And basically, Deku would be informed of the one for all secret. Not only that, but all of the students of class 1A would quite literally now know about All Might's secret because of the fact that Deku literally unknowingly exposed All Might by canceling All Might's quirk. All right, that's literally what happened. So, uh,. Yeah, everybody now knows about All Might's thing, and that means that he actually ends up going to the to the Camino Woods because of the simple fact that no, I don't think it's called the Camino Woods, but the little forest training place. You know, he ends up going because now everybody knows, so they're like, "Don't worry, All Might." You know, like we're not gonna tell anybody. A bunch of pro heroes know, except for Mandalay and all those people. So you know, All Might just ends up tagging along, meaning he's in the bus, and everybody's just kind of asking him questions about the injury. All Might still doesn't reveal one for all, but he does reveal the fact that you know he has an injury which doesn't let him use his power for too long and when he doesn't use it then it basically causes him to turn like this everybody starts thinking that he must have some sort of transformation quirk but all might would basically just assure them that that's actually not what it is it's not a transformation quirk but all might would kind of not be able to convince them of this and he would kind of just accept the fact that they think that and so you know we basically just have the um these students arrive as Mandalay and, you know, the rest of the people would basically just be sitting there waiting for the students. All of them would get off and start looking at the view as they would realize, wait, why are we here if the camp is all the way over there? And, you know, the pro heroes would smile as they would throw them all off. And Deku being the Chad that he is literally isn't thrown off. He gets into the bus. He goes into the bus, just dodging the little wave of mud that was thrown at him as he's like, are we going to go yet? As, you know, Deku is just sitting there. And as I was like, come on, you got to go help your class. As Deku's like, all right, all right. I was just messing around. As, you know, he basically just looks at them and says, sayonara. As he jumps off the cliff and being the mad lad that he is, he uses Kirishima's quirk as he hardens. And as he's falling down from the cliff, he would smash his hand straight into the mountainside as he would basically like use his arms since they're so sharp to pretty much cause him to slow down once he gets to the bottom. As everybody sees this, they're like, it must be nice. As Deku, not only did he do that, but he ended up copying the person's quirk who it is to create mud monsters. So when they walk in there and they see the first one, Deku quite literally just waves his hand and the monster turns back to dirt. As everybody's just like, we love you. And Deku's like, I know. They all just basically end up having a relaxing walk across the forest with a couple of animals rushing at them. But when they show off their quirks, the animals run off in fear. I mean, like, bro, come on now. Like, if you're a bear, but then there's a kid with a fire quirk, you're probably going to run. You know what I mean? So that's, uh, you know, pretty much what happened. Those little animals would be done dirty by the UA students. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what ends up happening. In terms of the forest training arc after this, what would essentially happen is that... Um, you know, everybody would arrive as the the little, you know, everybody wouldn't really be too tired. And this is when Mandalay just finished fit, uh, cooking up the food for everybody. So we would basically just have um, them all sit down and eat as they're like, why are you guys not tired? And they're just like, oh, you know, Deku helped out quite a lot along the way as they're all like, you were supposed to let them fail on their own. You know what I mean? And Deku's like... I mean, I guess, but why would I when we're going to go through even more rigorous training tomorrow? As Aizawa was like, well, since you did that, they're doing it today. As everybody would have to stay up an extra two hours more than what they would have, 
literally doing the normal training that they had to do meaning like bakugo had to shoot explosions into warm water todoroki had to use fire and ice at the same time just keep using it continuously and that's essentially what their punishment was for you know just kind of following deku when it comes to deku they try to do something like that but deku is already way too powerful as it is that copy quirk of his is a little insane so, you know, they kind of just all realize that and Deku just pretty much helps out with everybody else's training as well as fighting against the, the fourth member of the P wild wild pussycats because he ends up fighting him in like, t in like you know, physical hand to hand combat and we basically just have him fighting against, you know, the, the big guy. So we would essentially just have, you know, Deku, you know, doing his thing, fighting against him and the first night would be over. After that, we would basically then cut over to the next day, where the next day would be even worse, because they're all actually sleep deprived since they lost like two hours of sleep, and yeah, you know, they were not at their maximum potential. So this night, they were even more tired than in the original, and All Might is still, you know, he's still going to be hit, sitting there just kind of helping everybody train, but he's kind of not going to be there for most of the day, kind of just in his room a little bit, since... He doesn't really want to use his big All Might form all day because in the nighttime, they're going to be playing the hide and go seek stuff. So he wants to be able to save anybody in case anybody gets into some tough situations. That being said, though, All Might is kind of just on standby right now. And we would essentially just have the day go by normal until the students all have to cook their curry. When they all do that, you know, they all end up having a pretty good time. The Mineta stuff ends up happening and Deku finds out about Koda. That being said, when Koda ends up leaving, Deku ends up actually following him. Meaning, Koda's not going to be, you know, resting in peace in this part. So, yeah, Deku, when he's with Koda, he basically talks to him. And Koda just looks at Deku as he would just ask him what would he know. He's some popular little little boy who's some popular kid who thinks that he has everything it must be nice to you know be blessed with everything that he has at least he gets to experience parents have fame have every every little person like him well koda looks at him and says well that's not what i want i just want my parents back as he would cry a single tear and deku like hearing this would just be like i like he, he would be about to say i'm sorry but he would kind of just stay silent and out of nowhere we would from the corner hear some laughter happening as he would say don't worry kid i'll reunite you with your family very soon as he would look at him and uncover himself with the hood that he had on as he would look and it would be mr no um it would be the the villain muscular deku seeing this would immediately just think that oh great as he would proceed to essentially look at muscular as he would begin to rise with muscle sh shape and size as deku would quite literally steal muscular's not i keep saying steal but he would copy muscular's quirk as instead of growing to a gigantic size deku would grow and then condense all the muscle into one small compact form as muscular just looks at deku and is thinking if he has the same quirk but this one he would then remember that there was some kid who was able to copy abilities in the sports festival and say <laughs> gonna be fun to finally fight against somebody with some strength as he would then rush at Deku, and Deku would look at Koda as he would say, Get out of here, Koda! Koda would look at Deku as he's just stuck in fear, looking at Muscular, just thinking that that's, that's him. You know, Deku would see that he's too afraid to move as Deku would rush in at Muscular and punch him, sending Muscular into the mountainside. As Muscular just gets flung into it, he would then get out of the crater as Deku would turn towards Koda and say, Go, Koda! Now! As Koda would say, Uh... Oh, okay, as he would begin to basically slowly start running away, Deku would be turned so he would be a little distracted and Muscular would punch Deku right in the stomach, causing Deku to be sent back a little bit. As Deku would just wipe some blood off of his mouth as he would say, that's a good one, let me show you mine. He would throw a punch at Muscular so fast that Muscular wasn't even able to react as Muscular gets punched so hard that he's flung to the bottom of the woods. Deku would then jump over there in a Hulk manner as he would land in front of Muscular and think that this quirk is amazing. He would rev up the strength boost so he would make it even stronger. Remember guys, one for all had a like had a pretty decent time struggling with Muscular quirk, so it has to be pretty strong. So Deku would use this as he would just send a gigantic punch straight at Muscular and Muscular is knocked out. Deku doesn't, doesn't even end up finding out about, you know, Bakugo wanting to get kidnapped in this version of events. And Shigaraki is not even here, you know, just to, uh, to say or speak. So, 
you know, we basically just end up having everything play out as it does in canon. Deku would end up arriving with Shoji and Tokiyami as he ends up saving Tokiyami by bringing him over to Todoroki and Bakugo, who end up using their flame and explosion quirks respectively to cause Tokiyami's dark shadow to go back. And so after this, they end up meeting with uh, you know Toga and Uraraka and, to and um, Suyu, as they all basically end up realizing that Bakugo's nowhere to be found, as well as Tokiyami. Deku ends up noticing Mr. Compress as he just thinks, "Damn it!" As he basically ends up having some fire wings fly out of his back, and Mr. Compress seeing this is just like, "Oh no!" You know, he's just thinking that this kid might genuinely like stop him from his mission so what mr compress would do is he would grab the things that he has in his hand as he would throw them straight at dobby to which deku would blitz right past mr compress trying to grab the like the orbs as he would grab tokiyami put him in his pocket and then basically rush over trying to grab bakugo's orb but he misses it just barely and Bakugo basically ends up getting grabbed by, by dobby as the portal would open and we would then basically have Bakugo getting taken into the portal, but Deku would use Bakugo's explosion quirks that he already had stored that he didn't want to use as he would propel himself straight into the portal, just barely, as he would go into the League of Villains hideout, like doing a little bit of a roll on the ground, as he would see all the villains, and Dobby would shoot blue flames right at Deku. Deku would proceed to jump back as he would dodge them just barely, and Shigaraki would say, huh, huh. Looks like he came to die, as he would rush right at Deku, and Deku without a second thought would copy Shigaraki's quirk, grabbing the ground as the quirk would quite literally spread through the entire ground, and it would decay every single person in the League of Villains hideout, like all of them die, and this wasn't even on purpose, and Deku seeing this is just like, oh no, like he accidentally literally just killed a bunch of people. Psyche, you thought that's not what happened. Deku obviously isn't some sort of villain. He's not going to do that. You know, he has control over the decay quirk. Now, what ends up actually happening is that Deku ends up basically decaying their, like, their legs. Like, he literally decays their feet. So, they cannot stand. And after this, Deku basically just ends up knocking each one of them out, respectively, with either a punch or a kick. Now, obviously, I could have actually had him kill people, but it's like, you know, it's kind of a little dark. And uh, I don't really want to take it there with the story. The story is just about getting ready to wrap up. So I'd rather just, you know, do my normal script that I was going to be doing. Or do the, not script necessarily, but the idea that I had in mind for the ending. That being said, though, guys, we would essentially just have Deku um, just kind of like look at, look at the villains as he's just accepting the fact that he won. Now... This is when All for One would open a portal, as he would just try to teleport all of the villains away, but Deku, he's not going to let that happen. Deku grabs the villains as All for One teleports there, and basically begins to do some, you know, some classic villain 101 stuff, you know what I mean? He starts clapping, saying, I see you made it, you know, doing all that crazy, you know, villain 101 stuff, as Deku just kind of looks at All for One, and he's like, really? You really finna do the classic villain shtick? As All for One just looks at Deku and he's just like, stick. As Deku is just like, whatever. And he basically just says, all right, let's get this over with. As he would begin to quite literally use Aizawa's erasure quirk, which has to be one of the most broken, like literally the most broken quirk in the My Hero Academia verse, especially for handling, what's it called? All for One. If no, one for all, one for all. No, 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 all for one. Yeah, all for one. Because if All Might was to have it with that strength, he would have destroyed all, all for, like, one for all. I mean, all for one a long time ago. So, after this, we basically kind of just have Deku walking over to All for One, who cannot use his quirk. He would see the red eyes and just think, Aizawa, as... Deku would just look at All for One and like just feel this presence of sheer like he feels as if he, if he does not get rid of this guy, he, he's gonna like kill a bunch of people. So Deku makes one quick decision as he basically walks over towards All for One, who at this moment for the first time in his life feels fear. And Deku would quite literally just charge up a gigantic ball of flames as the flames would go from red to blue to a black color as it would create like a condensed small little orb in his finger as he would throw it at all for one and it would 
and it would basically expand as it would quite literally erase all for one from existence. Shigaraki seeing this would say, Master, as all for one would simply just stick out his hand. And that is where what if Deku had a copy quirk is going to be ending. After this, guys, that is literally wraps. Like in terms of the overhaul arc and stuff like that, like it's pretty much just self-explanatory from this point forward that Deku is kind of just going to proceed to obliterate everybody else that he makes contact with. I mean, obviously I could go into the overhaul arc, but when it comes to the over overall just thing about like me wanting to do the what if, it's just gone to the point where Deku, like obviously from the starting point, was always broken, but he kind of just finished killing off the big and bad. And when it comes to overhaul, that arc probably would have been finished the second that they met him in the alleyway. Deku would have definitely handled all overhaul there so i don't really feel the need to cover that and in terms of the rest of the my hero academia story nothing really interesting happens so i think that this is a pretty decent part to leave the what if off with that being said though guys i hope you guys go on to have an amazing thanksgiving again guys remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video as well as hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss any future uploads seeing as during this thanksgiving break i'm gonna be going and like throwing you guys a bunch of bangers now for all of you guys who have been expecting what if naruto was in uchiha part three that will be coming out very soon i'm actually deciding whether i should drop it in movie format or just keep doing it in like little parts and then make it like a comp which I probably might end up doing. I'm leaning more towards that decision, but we'll see. Also, guys, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys go click on the link down below in the description if you guys want to go download, um, what's it called? Bunches. So you guys can, you know, talk with me. It's going to be linked down below in the description and it's going to be the first, you know, pinned comment in the video. That being said, though, guys, it has been your boy Zether. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I am out. Peace.